for them in a television documentary broadcast by Channel 4. Yet apparently he dropped off the list of those regarded as a potential threat, instead being on a list of about 20,000 people in the UK with extremist sympathies who are not thought likely to act on them. His part in Saturday's murderous rampage suggests that assessment was wrong or at the very least out of date. The Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said today that people would be asking how on earth he'd been let through the net. Well, Lord Carlisle is a former government-appointed independent reviewer of terrorism legislation. Harris Rafiq is chief executive of Quillam, the counter-terrorism organisation. Mr Rafiq began by telling me about an encounter between his colleague Osama Hassan and Quran Butt last year. It was at a family event at which Butt began to harangue Mr Hassan. He saw Quran Butt. He decided to just greet him with the Muslim uh, greeting of peace, assalamu alaikum. And Khurram refused to reply and then started going into a huge verbal assault where he started saying, you're from Quilliam, you're, the, you're an apostate, you're the person who believes that we come from apes, you believe in evolution, you believe this, etc., etc." And Osama tried to calm him down, tried to reason with him. And then he just ran at Osama and a scuffle broke out. So Osama decided that he would leave uh, and he called the police. He called 999. The police came. Uh, he rang me and I said, we need to inform the counterterrorism department, gave them all of the details and basically said to them, this guy is somebody who we know has been an extremist. He's part of the prescribed al muhajiru network. And this guy is now turned nasty. Uh, they told us that they were aware of him and we left it at that. And then yesterday when we saw the photographs that were released from the police and the name, what had happened was the police, it took them six months to find him. And they told us that he had been arrested and he'd received a caution. Alex Carlyle, listening to that example, is not the only example, of, no. uh, particularly to do with this man, but where people have raised this concern. I suppose we had a sense, perhaps until quite recently, that the security services were ahead of the game. They pretty much knew who they were concerned about and they were able to react to it. Are we now, do you think, starting to get to the stage where we will have doubts about that in the light of these three successive inf incidents? We're certainly going to have to recalibrate. I've been very disappointed by what I've heard in recent days, of which we've just heard a very poignant example. And I think we are, although the security services have done well, they've interdicted many plots, they've done better than comparable foreign security services, but plainly, we've had three disastrous episodes in the UK within recent weeks. And in my view, that demonstrates that they have to recalibrate, create a new triage system, as it were, when the counterterrorism hotline is telephoned or when a report is made, like the one we've just heard about. They have to have a better methodology to deal with this. Is it, in your judgment, a question simply of scale, that the numbers have now got too great for the approach they've had so far to work? Or is there something about the threat itself that's changed, that we're going from kind of sophisticated conspiracies to either individuals or very, very small arrangements. In this case, it was three people. Well, the threat has changed. The episode in Westminster was very typical of what we're expecting. Manchester was a real shock because it involved a bomb. What happened on London Bridge was rather like the Westminster episode. So we've known about this kind of thing for some time and it was predictable. It looks as though the security services, good as they are, have not put together a new methodology to be able to take action against those who may be low on the radar, but quite important. Harris Rafiq, let me, let me ask you on that. I mean, that's all very well, but it seems that uh, but in this case probably might well not have been even in, you know, at the higher end of groups of people who are of such concern that they would require that kind of regime. I mean, that, that suggests there might be a, a more fundamental problem with how people are being identified. No, I, I think that uh, Kurum Butt and let's not forget he was part of a network of individuals that were in this documentary, The Jihadis Next Door. This was the and, Channel uh, 4 programme. Absolutely. And there were some very, very clear, vile, bordering on illegal comments that were made by the whole network of individuals. Kurum should have been part of CPMs. That power should have been used. I mean, Al-Muhajirun, anybody who has been 
part of this network is certainly, in my opinion, and the opinion of many experts, somebody who should be in the middle or the top end of concern. And Kurum Butt is one of those people. Dr. Hassan, Sheikh Usama Hassan, is one of the country's leading interventionist providers on the government's channel program. I'm one of the people that was involved. I actually launched the Prevent Strategy in 2006 with Ruth Kelly. If he and I are telling the police and counterterrorism that it is in our expert opinion that this guy is dangerous, something's gone wrong. And had he been charged and arrested and gone through the due process, he may well have been in prison right now. Let me ask you then, Alec Kala, one other question, which is related to your experience as the independent reviewer of counterterrorism legislation in this country. Because it's one of the things that the Prime Minister has talked about. Do we need new laws? Do, do the authorities need more powers? I mean, she said tonight, for example, that if she's prepared to rip up some human rights laws, if they, quote, stop us from tackling terrorism. Is that a route we need to go down? I don't think we need to rip up any human rights laws, and I think it would be wrong to do so. For the most part, as Max Hill, the new counterterrorism reviewer, has said, we have the laws that we need. However, we do need to examine things like T-PIMS to ensure that there are sufficient controls to be inserted in T-PIMS and to that make we them use them effective, and of course that the government gets an appetite for using them. Harris Rafiq. Uh, absolutely. I, I don't think we need any more laws. We have enough laws. We have certain values as a society in terms of democracy, human rights, pluralism, the rule of law. We mustn't lose sight of those values that we have. We must hold on to them dearly and defend them. And there are enough laws in place right now. We have, don't seem to have the appetite and the consistency to challenge the ideology. If we don't challenge the ideology as a civil society in the same way we challenge fascism or homophobia or racism... All we're doing is providing the penicillin, if you like, rather than providing the inoculation and the immunisation. That's Harris Rafiq from Quilliam in conversation with the former terrorism laws watchdog, Lord Carlyle. During this election campaign, The World Tonight has been reporting from places